Hello, my name is Laura Dingman and I am thrilled to be joining Ignite for this Advent journey. And I pray this season has been rich for you and that God has been continuing to reveal himself in so many ways through his word and um, just through the ways that you are seeing him act around you. Um, he's such a good God that way. And today our text is from Luke chapter 1 verses 26 through 35, this visit from Gabriel when he announces the arrival of Jesus to Mary and what's going to happen. And um, I love this text and um, I'm particularly drawn um, to Mary's spirit in it. Um, so let's take a look at, at our text for today. Let's read that together. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And I love this text and there's so many, it's rich, um, just such a, a few verses, just rich with so many things. And I'm particularly drawn, like I said, to Mary's spirit in this text. And I can't imagine what she was feeling, what she was thinking um, when, when this angel appears to her and tells her what's going to happen and, um, and everything that she knows about how a baby is to be born is not something she's participated in. And so there are lots of questions that she has to have. And yet she asks only one, even in her fear and even in um, this troubled spirit that she has. And you know that there, she was human, so there had to have been thoughts that she was having. I would have had a lot more questions than just the one. I would have wanted to know um, about Joseph. What's Joseph going to think? What are my parents going to say? Is this going to cause some kind of scandal in our village? Um, is anyone even going to want to associate with me? Am I going to belong anywhere after this? How am I going to be ostracized? And then all of the hopes and dreams that she may have had. She'd been you know, dreaming, I'm sure, like any young girl, about her wedding and about what life was going to be like with Joseph. And this just really wasn't the plan. This wasn't what she had dreamed about. And yet she only asks one very simple question. She just says, how can this be? And, and Gabriel answers her very simply and says, the Holy Spirit will do the work in you. The Holy Spirit will be the one, the one who places the baby there. And even with all of what will other people think, there was, I'm sure, some of this, um, these thoughts within her of, I, there's no way that I can parent the Messiah. I'm going to raise up God. What is this even going to look like? And I'm sure that she faced this unknown future that she just really, really wasn't quite sure what it was going to look like. You know, I think a lot of the time we face unknown futures and maybe there's a task in front of you that just really looks just as difficult as Mary looking into the future, wondering what her life was going to be like now. And what's remarkable to me is that I know that there are things that Mary knew about God that allowed her to ultimately come to the next statement that she makes um, in verse 38, which says, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said, where she can fully open her hands and surrender to what it is that God has placed in front of her. Corey Ten Boom um, has a fantastic quote, and, and she spent time in, um, in a Nazi camp 
in, um, in during World War II and survived when all of her family did not. And one of the most powerful quotes that I've read from her says, never be afraid to trust your unknown future to a known God. And so I wonder when I read this text, what did Mary know about God that allowed her to go from one very simple question to a very um, complicated answer, but without any questions in between, where she could ask one question and fully surrender to God. Well, I think that Mary knew about God. I think that she knew that God was faithful. She knew the stories of her people. She knew how God had delivered them from the hands of the Egyptians, how he had walked with them through the wilderness, how he had provided for them over and over again. And I am positive that Mary had experienced the presence of God before and that she trusted who God was. And even more still, these words rang true to her when Gabriel said, the Lord is with you. So she knew that as she stepped into an unknown future and that even though she was going to be raising the son of God, that God himself would be with her all along, giving her everything that she needed for life and godliness. And I think she also knew what the promised Messiah was going to be like. Not that she knew exactly what Jesus was going, um, was going to like or, or how he was going to act or be, but she knew these words that Gabriel spoke when he says that, um, that he will be great and he will be called the son of the most high. The Lord will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Her mind was a kingdom mindset. Her mind was that of, of God himself and this Jesus that she was going to raise, where she was fully surrendered and her will was bowing down to the will of the Father. So I wonder today, what do we need to do in order to remember? What do we need to remember about this known God in order to step into an unknown future with such abandon and surrender, just like Mary did. So I would challenge you today, write out or think through or pray through those things that you know about God and lay down your questions before him. And, um, and my prayer for you today is that you will be able to see that God is faithful, that God is, is righteous, that he is trustworthy, that he is with you and that he is for you, that he is Emmanuel, God with you in the midst of this season and whatever season is coming. Lord Jesus, I pray that you will lead us and guide us into the future that you know, um, even if we don't know it. All of the hard things and God, all of the questions that we have, I know you can handle those. So may we come to you and may we trust who you are and may we trust your future for us because you, God, can be known. And, and will you just reveal yourself to us through the power of your holy scriptures and through the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask all of this in your mighty name, knowing that you will indeed reign forever, King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen.